Welcome back to the channel guys. So we're here today and we're gonna show you a new type of scape and a new type of fish that we've never actually kept here in the fish room. In fact, I've never kept this fish at all. This particular fish is a really cool cichlid that can be very colorful. This particular one that I've picked up isn't overly colorful and we'll talk about why that is here in a little bit. But in today's video, what we're going to be doing is showing you how we aquascape this particular style of tank, showing you all of the plants and materials, hardscape, and everything else that we're going to be using in this today and giving you a full breakdown of this entire scape. Then at the end we'll go ahead and get some fish in here. So let's go ahead and get into this today. So what we're going to be using for substrate is this right here and this is a combination of pool filter sand as well as some of that crushed rock that I used over here in the white mountain minnow tank and as you can see it's kind of a gray more gray color that matches the Syria stone but we went ahead and mixed it with some pool filter sand which kind of gives it a nice little brown tint so we're going to be using this. We're also going to be using some lava rock which is great for beneficial bacteria as well as building up a skin that you can then just simply cover with whatever your substrate choice is, which in this case is going to be this. We are also going to be using some Syria stone again, and then a couple of pieces of driftwood, which we have a whole bunch of driftwood down here. I was actually lucky enough to meet someone who has a big passion for collecting driftwood. So I was able to purchase a large amount of driftwood for many, many builds coming up from this particular person. And that is great because we have some big builds coming. In fact, if you look right here, we have a bunch of big driftwood. We have a bunch of smaller driftwood. We have the driftwood that we're going to be using in this tank today actually has been soaking for some time and has been boiled and cleaned and things of that nature. So we have a lot of driftwood for a lot of different projects that are coming up. So we'll show you that driftwood that's going into this tank here in just a little bit. But to start, let's go ahead and start talking about the plants. So we're going to be using a few different plants. We're going to use some of this broadleaf Ludwigia. We are going to probably take a couple of Java ferns maybe one of these nano anubias. We may use some of this ambulia. I'm not really sure. We may, we have this cool little dwarf lily right here. So a lot of different plant options, but we're gonna get into that here in just a little while. But what I'm gonna use for our planted substrate is going to be some of this fluval stratum substrate. And the reason I'm using this, this stuff works fantastic for a planted tank. Now our base level substrate is not going to be that fluval stratum substrate. We're actually gonna be using a different method and we will only be using that planted substrate specifically where plants will be planted. And then we'll just simply cover that substrate with our substrate of choice. In this case is this gray crushed rock and the pool filter sand that has been combined together. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get into this actual scape by laying down a kind of a breakdown of where things are going to go so we can understand where plants are gonna be and those types of things so we can make sure we get our planted substrate where we want it. Now looking at our tank here, this is just a standard 20 gallon long tank and what we've done is gone ahead and painted the background black. We kind of want this to be a little darker inside of the tank and that black background will actually help with a couple of things that will help with it appearing to be darker in the tank as well as when you start getting up underneath the scape and looking back, it appears as if it kind of goes on forever and that's what we want this to look like. What we have here is we have Syria stone and this stone is going to be perfect for what we're trying to accomplish. And really what I'm gonna start doing is just kind of building this up because we want a nice base for what our driftwood is going to kind of lean over and sit on. So what we're going to be using is some Loctite super glue that is liquid and this is a cyanoacrylate based glue which means that the moment that it cures it is inert meaning that it is safe for fish. And how we're going to do this is with some cotton balls. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of cotton here 
and split this cotton ball in half. And what we will do is come in here and start poking this cotton in where the wood hits. So we'll put a little piece there. And as you can see up in this corner here, if you can just barely see right here. So that is cotton that's right up in there. I'm gonna come over here on the back side of this tank and I'm gonna stuff some right down in here, which you cannot see. And now what we need to do is start using this cyanoacrylate glue and gluing this in. Now what I'm gonna do is as I glue, I'm gonna cover this piece of cotton with some additional rock and naturalistic looking substrate to hide the cotton. So what I'm using to cover is some little pieces of Syria stone that's been busted up, which will match nicely. So we have now glued in our piece of driftwood. We have all of the cotton covered up. We're just gonna kinda come back in and see where we can place some of these larger stones, see if they work anywhere. So we have all the driftwood glued down, the rocks where we need them from this perspective. Now what we need to do is go ahead and lay some of this planted substrate. We're gonna start with some in this back corner over here because we are gonna have some plants back there. And we're also gonna come up and put some right here in the foreground. And we'll have some back here in the background as well. So now I'm gonna come in with this paintbrush and just get this out of here where I don't need it. We just wanna make sure that we have a nice layer of this planted substrate wherever plants are going to be. So now that we have our planted substrate where we need it, we're gonna go ahead and get our regular substrate dropped in here. We will just be able to use our planting forceps and stick it right down into this planted substrate underneath our regular substrate. So we're gonna start using this brush and just brushing our substrate out. Now what this does is this protects our layer of planted substrate that's down underneath, allowing us to just plant once we're ready. Okay, so we have the initial portion of the scape done. So now what I need to do is come back in with just some detailed type things. I wanna get this sand off of this wood and go ahead and add some details to this. And what we're gonna do that with is maybe some additional driftwood, maybe some moss, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and get this done. We're gonna go ahead and start planting some moss. So what I have here is some Christmas moss and we're gonna go ahead and start planting this into the cracks and crevices of this piece of driftwood. And the way we're gonna do that is very simple. And that is we're just gonna take some super glue and we're gonna start gluing this into those cracks and crevices. So let's get that done. And now we're gonna go ahead and start planting some of the other plants. Now, what I have here to start with is we're gonna go ahead and place a really nice java fern in here. This actually looks like it may be a crested java fern just because of the way the leaves are. But I'm thinking that maybe we will place that kind of back in here. Just right there, we'll just wedge it between the rock because we don't want it to actually be in the substrate and it will grow nicely right there. Plus it's nice, big, and green and it kind of gives a little bit of depth to the tank. Now the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and add is going to be some of this broadleaf Ludwigia, which looks like this here. And these are just going to be placed along the back side of the tank just in a couple of little groupings. And what we'll do with these is we're gonna take these with our forceps and we're just gonna press these down into that planted substrate that we put in here. So we'll get them like right down into there. And that stuff will stand up pretty well once the water gets into this tank. We have three more little pieces of this that we're gonna go ahead and place back there as well. We have some embolia, I believe is how you say it, which is also gonna go back into that background a little bit. So 
same kind of concept. This stuff has a nice big root ball on it. We're just gonna take this and we just wanna make sure that that root ball gets pushed down as much as possible into the substrate. And then we have a couple of plants that I've actually never used. This is actually called a tiger lily. And this one has actually been detached from the bulb, which is okay. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take this root system and just make sure that the root system is buried nicely down inside of the substrate and this thing will actually start to root and will hold on now with this it usually has a bulb on it this particular one has come off of the bulb and we are actually regrowing the bulb in one of our plant tanks so it will actually sprout brand new tiger lilies for us and then we have a dwarf lily which is the planting on this is exactly the same we're gonna kind of plant this right here next to this one just burying the roots this one also had a bulb on it and the bulb is growing new plants in our planted tank right now so we'll put that guy right there and then finally in this open spot down here we're going to plant a Kleiner bar sword to kind of take up some of the space this thing is good and big so it'll do really well down here so we're going to grab this thing just by the root ball and we want to place that down into that substrate that we put back in this corner here and that thing will do fantastic right there and then we'll probably accent that a little bit with a rock maybe just one of these flat pieces of serious stone just get it up underneath the leaves here kind of bury it in the substrate make it look natural like that and i believe that leaves us with one thing and that is to fill this up with water and see how these plants stand up and see what it looks like so let's get that done all right well we finished planting and we went in and filled up with water and now i'm just going to skim the top of this water get all this plant matter out and then we are going to go ahead and treat this water make sure it's nice and safe for the fish as well as go ahead and add a couple of little small details to this tank all right, what we're gonna be treating our water with is we're gonna be using this API Stress Coat Plus. And this stuff basically removes all the chlorines, the chloramines, things of that nature, making the tap water safe. So this tank has actually been cycling for about three or four days. I went ahead and added the Stress Coat Plus after I'd finished scaping the tank. And we went ahead and doubled up on the dose just simply because we're adding new fish. Even though this tank has been up and cycling for a few days, we're still gonna go ahead and add some of the API Quick Start, which will allow for the instant addition of fish and will help just jumpstart the bacteria colonization. All right, now that we have the water treated, we're gonna go ahead and add some of these smaller kind of detail rocks into the tank. And we'll just kind of just throw them in here wherever we kind of see fit. Just kind of bury them in the substrate, make it look a little natural. All right, well now that we have these fish in here, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Well, it's been a couple of days since we finished this scape up and I did make a couple of changes. If you take a look really quick, these Epistos are all out. They like to kind of stay into this 
cave structure right here that I built. And I did that on purpose, just simply because they do like caves. And if you look right there, we got an Amano shrimp that's hanging out. I'm pretty sure that these two right here have paired up. They never leave each other's sides. And then the other two just kind of swim around by themselves. This tank is looking really, really good. It's probably one of my favorite tanks that I've scaped. And what I did is I went ahead and added just between the Embulia and the Broadleaf Ludwigia. I added a couple of strands of this Rotala Indica, and I also changed the Kleiner Bar Sword out over here for this big, really good looking Anubius Kafafolia. And what I did is I just tucked it up under that rock, because just like with any Anubius, we don't want the rhizome planted into the substrate. I also went ahead and added a couple of floating plants, nothing major, but overall this tank is looking fantastic and I really like these little wild caught Epistogramma cockatoides. They are a really, really cool addition to the fish room. So this little dwarf lily and this tiger lotus both look fantastic. And just overall, I'm really happy with this scape. So with that, hopefully you guys went on to enjoy this video. Hopefully you like this new scape and these epistogramma cockatoides, these little pygmy cories, the cardinal tetras and the little Amano shrimp that we put into the scape. If you notice right back here, you'll notice that the backyard rescue pond is actually full of water, which is something we've been working on for a while, but we've gotten a lot of rain here in Texas, so we haven't been able to finish it, but we're working on finishing that today. So that's actually gonna be our next video coming Coming out is converting that backyard pond into both an aquatic and terrestrial rescue setup where we can put turtles and things of that nature. So make sure if you haven't joined the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you do not miss the content coming out. Make sure you go follow us on Instagram as well and Facebook. All the links are in the description of every video. And with that, we will see you next time. Uh -huh.